Hello, and welcome to Barefoot Miniatures. Hello and welcome to part 2 or part B of the Chaos Warriors Guide on the Barefoot Miniatures channel. Yet again, we can't keep him away, I am joined by Callum. Say hi Callum. Hi Callum. Yes, I am joined by Callum and we are going to be doing today the, the Chaos Warriors sort of infantry, or not infantry, the unit side of it rather than the characters and special rules. So if you've not seen part one, uh, there will be a link somewhere around up there. Up there. So I'm mirrored for some reason. Um, yeah, and that was out last week. So it will be three videos ago in the like the order. If you like watching this, don't forget to do all the youtube -y stuff. Comment what we've missed out because it helps not only us, but anyone else watching the video and reading the comments who wants some extra tips. Um, and it's obviously there's a finite amount of time so we can't cover everything. And if you really like it, there is a Patreon link below where you can get yourself ad-free videos in podcast format as well as YouTube format and early release as well as dice and other Patreon benefits. Um, and yeah, though, that's, that's the, biz the dirty business stuff, Callum. Like so. and subscribe as well. Like oh, did I say that? That's the YouTube -y stuff. There yeah. we go. Yeah, doing the Lord's work. Um, and let's, yeah, let's get, kick it off. Chaos Warriors. Um, let's do it. Hardcore infantry. Now, I think the, the main thing that we'll do on, on these sort of unit ones is give not only just a look at the unit, but also a comparison. And yeah, I think there's, there's three comparisons that we're going to do across the, the Chaos Warriors. And this might be very obvious, but Chaos Warriors, Marauders and Chosen and why you would take each. So while we're going through it, we'll mm -hmm. have a think about like what each unit brings. And then we can have a talk after that on like why you would take what and what sort of army we would style in each, if that is relevant. Yeah. Because that's something that we missed out of the last one. We did. Yeah. So Chaos Warriors, weapon skill 5, so one higher than most other races, basic, if not elite infantry. Like, it's it's better than Empire Greatswords, better than Knights of the Realm. You've got to be a questing knight to get the weapon skill 5. Um, the same as a lot of elves, like Eternal Guard for Wood Elves is 5. But it's a strong weapon skill level, as you would expect from chaos ballistic skill who cares strength toughness four so you're as strong and tough as an ogre but one wound because you're not you're much cheaper than an ogre you've got initiative four which is solid one attack two on the champion leadership eight which is like decent yeah, it's not, all right yeah not leadership dwarf yeah. but yeah. fairly decent and 13 points isn't too hefty it's comparable to a Bretonian Knight of the Realm on foot with a great mm. weapon, let's say. Um, what you get for that? Hand weapon and heavy armour, and your hand weapon is ensorcelled, so magical and minus one AP. And also Chaos Undivided for rerolling Panic, Fear and Terror. And you get heavy infantry troop type, which is pretty good. I do rate that a lot. Do you know what? It's one thing that I miss, about, miss out. Do you want to tell us what that does, Callum? Oh god, you really caught me off guard here. Um, you brought I it think up. if yeah, I know I fucked it up. I think if you get flanked or rear charged, don't quote me on this. Uh, I think if they don't outnumber you or then it doesn't match more than ten, you don't get. Um, you don't get you disrupted unless disrupted, the enemy has it, yeah. your strength ten. Um, yeah, that's the one. Rather than the normal <laughs> five, attention. and you get yeah. your ranks at four wide rather than five wide though which is really good we, it is because it preserves it a bit longer but yeah. how i like to run my chaos warriors when i run them 
is like seven wide minimum. And right. I'll run them in 21 or even like 24 or eight wide. And just ram them down people's throats. Like the heavy armor and when you add a shield for an additional point is mm. sol- I, it's solid. I I definitely take full command on anything that's a decent size. Like and by which I mean if you're taking five, don't take full command. If you're taking ten, I'd probably not. Maybe more than mm. ten, that's when I'd start thinking about standard bearer. Yeah. Champion and musician I'd take all the time, right? Because you're not giving away victory points for it. But yeah, the standard is a bit more of a, a toss up in all the smaller units. Have you um, got any preferences on the size? Coming? I, so I, when I first looked at the rules, I was like, okay, I like five wide. I've always liked five wide. And I've seen that, you know, the front ranks, being in the front rank and how to, how wide you are, you get extra, t- you get all those attacks yeah, yeah. depending if you're charged or charged. But I think I will do them six to seven wide, but I will still have two back ranks. So I'm looking at about you know 721 unit size of 21. Yeah, so I, 21, I 21, to, 21 to 18. That's what I'd go for. Yeah, so I, I don't think they're too expensive to mean that you wouldn't take them in that sort of size. Like a 13 mm. points a model, like 21 of them is like 240 points. Let's just say off the top of my head, it's around there, and it gives you a decent block of survivable, powerful infantry that really, how I sort of like to think about my front rank, especially with Chaos, is I'm going to be better in combat than my enemy. Near universally. So, I like to, even though you can attack with one attack with everyone on the front, it gets a bit unwieldy past seven or eight. Like The peasant yep. block that I've got at ten wide is a similar size to seven or eight wide of Mm. chaos warriors and they have a real hard time doing anything but moving directly forwards because because the the cost that it is to wheel you get like sort of 15 degrees round a circle Mm. when you start wheeling with movement four so i i think these are really good with like you said in that sword and just sword and shield i think generally is really good like like loadout for them one, because, you know, shield's one point. So you get a four-up save, which is pretty decent. And your weapon skill five, strength five, toughness five. The other one I quite like is the additional oh, hand weapon as well. Yeah, strength, strength four. Yeah. Yeah. yeah addi- Sorry, that's not, yeah. Additional hand weapon's good. The only, I suppose it depends what you're going into. I'd, I'd always take the shield, right? Yeah. Because then you get the 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 option to use your shield and an assault sword weapon. Additional hand weapon as you say, is nice. Because the like two attacks, three on the champion, makes you effectively chosen. It's mm. just you're not getting that minus one AP. Is the only I think, I think they're a bit of a Swiss Army knife unit. That's why I've always feel about them. Since, you know, even in the previous editions and stuff, they always seem like they're, they're not the best at, at like all types of combat, but they are pretty good at it. And they will they will accept, excel at different things, uh, depending how you tool them up. Well, let's talk about the like all of the weapons then. Like, yeah, additional hand weapons. Yeah, I think he's fairly solid, but you just got to worry about the losing the unsorcelled. Yeah, great weapons. They are, are great. They they're less good. I would say an in infantry than they are cavalry, mm. where you're not like guaranteed the charge, but then. Chaos Cavalry, you'll tend to get lances or flails anyway. Yeah. But still the minus two AP is is really good. Yeah. Halberds, it means you wound toughness threes on a two, but the, the minus one AP puts me off a little because I've already got minus one AP on my ensorcelled weapons. Yeah. And obviously halberds aren't ensorcelled. Now, it, there is something to be said for that wounded on twos, I think. Mm. but it's just not my favoured approach. And it might be something that I, I have to try out more because I've not that's the massive yeah, that's the thing. time of day. It does come with Armour Bane as well, but on a six uh, on the Hellbirds, which, you know, 
It might be here or there. It's not See, really I, a massive I never fit. count it because although I might get like one or two armor bits, yeah. it's to rely on that like going in. It's like, oh, oh, of I've course. Yeah, yeah. I've, lost, I've lost combat. So in just my train of thought of looking at Yeah, things. it's not it's not why you buy the Halberd. Um I think it is it comes down to what you were saying. It's it's really you're looking to start mushing through toughness free like sort of elite units maybe I'd say like those sort of elf units that like sword masters or something like that. Yeah. So shields I'd pretty much always take shields as you said it gets to the four up. Yeah. Like it's just great and it's worth preserving your thirteen point infantry for <laughs> do you know like for having that one point shield. Yeah. Now marks calm Definitely something to be said for additional hand weapons with cotton. Gets you three yeah. attacks per model. Yeah, well, that's just pretty low, up that low weapon, that. Like, and yeah. it, Then if you combine that with the generic standard of Armour Bane 2. Yeah. Now that Armour Bane putting out like 21 attack or 22 attacks from a front rank, including a champion, mm. then starts popping off. Yeah. Like, getting a decent number of Armour Bane hits in. Nurgle to be that minus one to sorry the re-rolling ones to hit. Fet like solid, um, it's a combat unit, right? Nurgle's your sixes to wound get re-rolled, yeah, that's the one. Oh, is it sixes to wound? Yeah, yeah. If, if you oh, like, I said once to hit six. the inside, yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's re-rolling the positives rather than the negatives. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always get confused as well. Idiot. Um forgive us or forgive me in the, in this case, it's it's currently ten to ten at night and I've <laughs> I've rushed home <laughs> to do this guide with Callum. We've got Marcus Lanesh, and do you want to do Marcus Lanesh? Yeah, so bonds? it's a plus one initiative from the first round of combat, which is, I think, good. Considering if you are tooling these up with sword and board, hellbird, or additional hand weapons, because that will really make a difference, especially at those lower initiative units that will be charging in. Yeah, initiative, um, man. Like he's yeah. Nothing yeah, you try, no, not at all. Um, the other upside to it is is that you're immune to panic, which that yeah that that is something that can come up. So that being there is great. Yeah, well, that's with the other like obviously Khan is immune to psych, I believe, by having friends. Friends, yeah. So, but it is something that I think with the other two with Nurgle and Zinch because. Undivided, you re rolling it anyway. But Nurgle and Zinch, me playing Zinch, it's something that I, I have suffered from when mm. my like 300 point block of really tooled up Chaos Warriors just decides to run because they've suffered some casualties. It's, it's not a great day for the hard to No. Because you've no. got this, such an expensive unit when you've really started kitting it out. Because that's the thing, right? The leadership is all right, but it's not anything to write home about. So you want, if you can mitigate that in any particular way, yeah, like good. not like leadership elite, yeah, elf unit or elite, or dwarf units, yeah. Um, right. I think that's what makes Snesh good actually, because um, it comes in a package of two things. Really, mm. it sells it as this, like this, and also this. So it's like ah. That's pretty cool. I, I see. Yeah. yeah. Um, Zinch, I'd say, is less useful on units because mm. flaming attacks I tend not to want to have on on like an entire army. Now, if, you, no. if you've like dotted about an individual unit, it's less of a problem because you just don't put your Zinch mm. unit into your, your opponent's character, which has got a three-up ward versus flaming. But it can get annoying. Mm. And and having a Zinch unit of just like 15 dudes can be a good wizard bunker, but I think that job may be done better by Marauders of just having a wizard bunker just by being... Yeah, there. I agree. But there's, the Zinch's like on the Warriors can be cool because, like, like you said, if you put a wizard in there and there's more than 10, he gets additional plus one to cast, which is really cool um, with, him be with him being in that unit of Warriors. But you can do that with Marauders anyway. So, yeah, and it, I think as like a baseline, like it might be useful to compare 
versus chosen and marauders until we really get into it but just yeah. as a, a quick summary of them chaos warriors like they're equal in strength i would say to the elite units of other armies yeah so be aggressive with them and don't have your expensive unit of warriors sat around doing nothing for an extended period yeah. because be aggressive just, yeah because they can take it in most situations with that high strength yeah. high toughness high weapon skill they can just get themselves out of a lot of situations i found when i've, yeah, I've I lost feel, games by being too conservative yeah. i feel like if you that's not your play style probably don't take chaos warriors um probably take the next option we'll come up to but um sorry not next option but one of the future options that's coming up but um i think with chaos warriors here you have to be aggressive and don't do not hold back with them just try and but position carefully also on top of that but uh yeah just be a bit more vigilant when using them yeah so on to chosen and i would say that bit about being vigilant callum yeah you can start <laughs> to forget <laughs> because yes so basically these are normal chaos warriors with an additional attack and additional leadership they're four points extra but for that i also gain chaos armor six plus which is nothing to be sniffed at as well as stubborn it's so good <laughs> yeah now you've got magic stand up to 100 points rather than 50 points so that you can get banner of the gods i believe um you can get full plate armor for two points a model, which I'd say definitely take. Drill yeah. for one point a model. Best rule in the game. How I have read the drilled rule. Which I'd definitely take it. Um, Me too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's on, on any movement you can change your front rank. You can like depending on on when the next FAQ comes out will have it confirmed or disproved, but being able to come out of a marching column and charge is incredibly good. Mm. And just being able to motor up the board 12 by marching column in with a bit more impunity is really good. And definitely how it's intended. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, I, I think so, because otherwise there's... If you could march in column and then don't get to like drilled out of it and charge... Well, I might as well have just marched up twice. Yeah, it's just no point. Yeah, um, it beats. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me the other way round. And I also, in anyway, anyway, that's a different. Yeah, we digress. That's, we a, digress, digress, that's a different so, topic. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. See everyone who disagrees in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what to say about these? As a special choice, I think they they were taken. Obviously, they're competing with Chaos Knights. But I yeah. tend to never be disappointed in mine when I use them. I can really fuck up sometimes with my chosen warriors, and they're just like, "Yeah, <laughs> whatever." Like we're yeah, we're just harder than anyone else. So yeah, I don't know. They're really good units. Corn, you're gonna get four attacks with an additional hand weapon from, which is craziness. It's loco. Yeah, like the the other marks obviously are, the, are fairly similar with what they're going to do for you as yeah. the previous, but still just as worth taking. The weapons options, similar. Now, I think the main thing difference is unit size. Or maybe not different, because I, I still like 21 to 24 as a block. And I actually mm. still think it's worth the investment. I think you can get away with less, but I think it's still worth the investment. What do you think, Colin? I'm going to take 18. Three sixes? Six, yeah, six, yeah, three sixes. Um, I think they've got enough attacks to sort out themselves in the front rank. I think being heavy infantry, being full Y gives you a rank rank. And I think there's not having two ranks at the back, it's not, even though it's a lot of points, I still don't think it's nothing to sniff at. And being six wide... They're not too wide enough to be super unmovable. They're actually still quite swifty around and being able to get into places where not necessarily is, you know, because there's lots of things to stop 
stop you moving properly and getting into locations where you want to be from just being too wide. And um, I think that for me and how I want to be playing, um, being six wide, uh, two back, mm. uh, sorry, three back uh, is ideal for me. But again, it's I know it's a, I know it's a lot of points, um, but I, I like it as well. I like I like rank and file. I like yeah. rank and file. No, it's I, cool. I do. Yeah. I agree. Like, and I think one of the benefits of a ranked up unit is that you have the benefits of that ranked up unit, and then when you add in drilled like chosen warriors have, if you were outnumbered units wise with your opponent, you can go you can basically drill into a wider formation, move up in a, a narrower formation, even not marching column, just a normal six wide. And then, oh, I'm about to get flanked. I'm going to drill out into a longer line and then make sure my opponent can't flank me by just being like wide yeah. enough to cover all of it. Like I've done it against Pete's vampire counter like once and I've done it against Phil's ogres once and it, it worked really successfully like with that drilled rule and then being mm. solid enough in combat to match up against multiple opponents, it sort of solved my chaos problem of being expensive and therefore being outnumbered units wise. This is what I wanted to get onto after saying being expensive and surviving. I actually think that with just swords and boards is a really good way. If the strength four, strength four is good in this game. Like you're still wounding most other infantry on yeah, freeze. Um, Even wounding ogres and dragon ogres on fours. Like yeah. It's, it's really solid. I don't think there can be enough said for that like, little stat change to the four. Yeah. And it being on both strength and toughness. It's really, really good. And having the ensorcelled weapons, man, like, and that, that going off when you've got a shield still. It means you've yeah. got a three up save and a six up ward. And you're going to be tanky. Like you just you're gonna just tank you're gonna tank as much as you can. Obviously, there's gonna be situations where that might not be ideal, but you know that's why drilled's great. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's just being able to play with that that size. Now, banner wise, again the armor bane standard, good. Yeah, this is where blasted standard might start coming into it for the. Rerolling armor saves of a one, because you, that's what I would take. Yeah, especially when you start investing more and more into the unit. Hmm. Obviously, it depends who you're playing, but I tend not to tailor my list to who I'm playing. I tend to keep it always the same, and that's it. So I like the idea of it always being this: is what you see is what you get, as opposed to being ah, oh, actually. But yeah, I think blaster standard will be uh, depending on what you play, but I think will be pretty clutch. Yeah. Agreed. So, finally, Chaos Marauders. Oh, and yeah. These are chaff. Your favourite. But, but they, are, <laughs> they are. These are chaff, but not chaff. So, six points a model, a bit chaffy. So, men at arms are five. You've got... What? I, I didn't realise that. Men at arms are five. Yeah, I'm six sure point, they're five. One, maybe they're... one point... What? Or maybe the old regard Marauder. that I've been using a five, but yeah. like it's it's within that realms. You've got weapon skill four. Yes, strength toughness three like a human, initiative three like a human. Leadership six might seem low, but you've got warband to add your rank bonus to your leadership, so that'll be eight or nine because of your Marauder Chieftain being leadership seven. If you have Master of Mortals as a demonic gift on you, anyone who is near this unit. I definitely give them that because then they go to leadership ten. I was just about to say that Master mm. of Mortals is so good in a Marauder Army. Just always take it. <laughs> yeah, if you've got any Marauders for twenty five points to make them leadership ten, easy purchase. Yeah, easy purchase. BSB man, like BSB yeah. with Master of Mortals and ten with a reroll. Get out of here! So so brilliant. Now, if I'm going, so there's there's a few different ways to run these, right? As we just said, in a block, I'd be taking, mm. God, even up to, I, as I said, I run men at arms sometimes 10 wide. I'd even run these 10 wide and just not just have them as a, an anchor in the center and not expect them to have to wheel. Just yeah. deploy them well. Just move forwards. Force your enemy yeah. to do something about them. Yeah. And 
just go forwards, have that. This is a huge moving it's... block, ever moving forward. Just just go. Just rolling, right? Yeah. Like they're too, they're so cheap, you don't have to worry. Exactly. Now, I would give them light armor and shield so that then they become eight points. Out of the great weapon of flails, what would you go for, Colin? Flails. Yes. <laughs> flails, I, flails. I and more flails. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's um, because they, they both yeah. plus two strength. Um, yeah. Flail is only in the first round of combat, but they're, they're both AP minus two all the time. Mm. Yeah. And that AP minus two is so big. So big. Yeah. And with fallback in good order being a very common thing, I think you want the... Fl- the- <laughs> <laughs> the flails, really, but I would still take the shields. Yeah, because you always if you won't be like following up. You'll be restraining, right? You would be just be like, I'm not going to move up to follow up from that. I'm just going to sit here and look at you. Yeah, if if they give ground, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they give ground, yeah. uh, you would sort of hold up just for because you want that next round of combat to be the same bonuses you just got previously. Yeah. Now. We do that because they give ground. Now, shield wall, I think you want shield so that you can use the shield wall rule. Mm. So that when you get beaten in combat, you just go, nah, I'm going to just fall back in good order. Oh no, just give yeah. ground instead of falling back in good order. Yeah. And with 10 and a reroll, that will be near every time. Let's just sort of add it up. So six points standard, mm. seven points for the mor- for the flail. Then you can take the shield, which is eight points. You know, there's only eight points for all that already. It's just with, with the bonuses it gives, the shield gives you for that rule, and what the flail does provides to, to the, the mortar itself. It's pretty good. Yeah. No, I, I think they're a really good investment. Like 32 to 40 of them, mm. I think is really solid and they've, they've got the output from being weapon skill four strength five with a big front rank all getting attacks in mm. just incredibly good what mark do you give them uh so i've been taking mine undivided recently for yeah. that re-roll all the time zinch i've had success just because it like like a caster can go in there it buffs the unit a little bit because Chaos Sorcerers are still good in combat. Yeah. Or still reasonably good. They're a Chaos Warrior level of good. And then they're like a bunker that gives me plus one to cast, which is good. I'm going to keep saying good. So, <laughs> but it is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you, I think, you have been planning something, or have been doing something different. What, of my Marauders? Yeah. <gasps> Uh, was this not where you were talking about flails plus one with the slanesh? Yeah, so I was umming and ahhing about taking slanesh, slanesh with flails and then, you know, just running them up the board and then just seeing what people take. It's, it's, there's lots of things you could do with them. Mm. Um, but, you know, to be honest, I've not had much experience with them. So really? I'm much no no because I you know me I I like my big chunky boys, um, I'm not too familiar with using marauders as much as other people. But the the staple I can see going forward is chaos warriors flails shields, uh, sorry chaos marauders sh- flails shields, and then around that you build what you like. You take whatever mark you like, whatever depending on what your game plan is with that. Um, the other part of this, I'm interested to hear your point on it, is the skirmish and open order, which you can choose for free. So I'd, I've not had any experience. I've not seen it, but I would like to know your take on it. And if anyone in the comments says anything. So open order. The, the move a single and tilt up to 90, I think was made useless by the fact that you can only still go within your movement value. Yeah. So it means I could, well, I could have just wheeled that anyway. Um, if, so I, it, it's good for like not being disrupted by cover. 
So yeah. how dense the table is matters like to whether that's useful. But versus just getting plus one all the time from close order, I'd be tempted to just take close order in that one. Skirmishes, yeah. I think, is the the in, not the useful, the interesting one because it means you can get like a larger block and charge 360 like with, say, 15 dudes, 20 dudes, and just really protect yourself. I think that will be, yeah, the skirmish option. I think there's going to be some interesting play of that. I really do. Yeah, like goodbye gyrocopters. Like, I don't care about yeah. them anymore. Exactly. Those pesky units that flap around the board, sod that, you're gone. Yeah, here's 20 flail dudes. Mm. And they've not got the best leadership then, but I think you need a yeah. character anyway. Like with yeah. marauders in general, like warriors and chosen, I didn't really say because I think they can, they're obviously better with a character, but they can yeah. take care of themselves. Marauders, I think they're a good anvil without a character, and I think they're a great unit all, all round with even aspiring champion in to just add I just some to, combat res. I was about to say, just add the cheap aspiring champion in there. They're pretty tanky as it is. Go hog world. Yeah, like aspiring champion with flail. And just having it in the unit of Marauders, they they can't be skirmishing then because the aspiring champion is heavy infantry and these are regular infantry. Do you know? What? I'm just yeah. going to double check that since I've just said it and now I'm doubting myself. Yeah, <laughs> the heavy infantry, so you, you can't skirmish, I believe. Yeah, yeah. when you're using yeah. them with Marauders, but just in a big unit, ranked up unit of them, really useful. I, I think I think more... chosen marauders. What are the okay. uses? What are the downsides? I think I think warriors. They're a jack of trades. They're not necessarily the best at particular role for what chosen do or what marauders do. But if you want a nice in between, I think that's mm. your slice. I think that's your slice you want to go for. Um, marauders are just big units to deal with that can still dish out the hurt and. They won't really go anywhere and they're cheap. So, if you're looking to put some points into your list in the infantry and your core, essentially, for a like just within the boundaries of your minimum points, I think Marauders is a really safe option. Um, obviously, chosen aren't core, uh, but um, in the sense of what they provide, I think it's just your elite little Death Star unit that's just going to go around obliterating whatever they fight. Of course, there's going to be situations where they might not, but in most cases, I would like to think with the right spells and the way you play them, they will just smash the crap out of most things they run into. Uh, I, do you know what? I've got nothing really to add to that. Spot on, Callum. Spot on. <laughs> Spot on. No, you know, if anyone, obviously someone might have a different take on it, I'd love to hear what they say because I'm always interested to see what other people are playing, what they're doing. So, yeah. Um, Comment section. <laughs> no, that's true, because it's what's made me even mention the halberds in the last section is mm. it was mentioned in the comments about like Slanesh troops with halberds. And it's it's something that I'd not really considered because of the overlap between the minus one AP and the ensorcelled weapons. Of course. I'd yeah. not really been accounting for that like wounding on a two up. I'd just yeah. been discounting it because of the lack of mine. I've been sort of laser focused on AP. In, yeah, yeah. In the old world at the moment. And maybe I think in a lot a little of change. But... I think I, th I think a lot of game systems in general as well. Whatever we all play outside of this game, armor's quite a big thing. Yeah. So your mindset sometimes zeroes in on it. But in this game, I don't think really there is a lot of armor that people expect. So having, I think just having in sort like ensorcelled weapons is just fantastic because the the armor values aren't tend not to be super high anyway, or sorry low in that case, but. Having, like I said, having the Marcus and Ash with the Halberds, they just wipe whatever gets in, even if it charges. Not always, but tends to, whatever charges, before they even get a chance to hit back. And they, they can just sit there as like a meaty shield. Yeah, or at least up to, it, you'd have to be Ogre or Great Weapon. Yeah, to be yeah that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah if, exactly. If they're hitting you with, like, if they're hitting your full plate chosen with just yeah. regular weapons... You're not too bothered about it because you that's, they're going that, to kill that's two exactly or three, my point. and then you're just going to be like, right, five of my chosen hit you back, and they've each got two attacks. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah, is that that's exactly my point. You you won't be 
you won't be like if, if it's if it's a they want to be fighting that chosen unit with something that can deal with them so crack through the armor and what's that tend to be great weapons or you know, big strong but low initiative monsters um there might be other cases where knights and stuff do yeah, you know, I think I think Chaos Chosen actually one of their weaknesses is probably like cavalry to a degree. Uh, yeah, but they, they can still deal with them. Yes, I I agree. Like you, you have got to obviously be careful with your rock paper scissors. But that, I mean, when you've taken them with shields and they're on a three up save, you've got a five up followed by a six up with Chosen. And this, this, I suppose, with these three units, they're both all so different and also all, I would say, very good that we can yeah. just go round in circles all day. So yeah, shall we move on to... Yeah, let's do it. Chaos Ogres. Oh, we're doing Chaos Infantry units. Yes. Yeah. Um, Ooh, you're very I, on these, are you? I have never taken Chaos Ogres in my years of playing fantasy in my life. And now, if someone has a play, I'd love to hear about it. But I just, I just, I think if I want to play ogre, ogres, I'll play them in an ogre kingdom's army. I don't think they've different, they, they as much different enough to play them in a in a chaos warriors army to want to justify playing them. I think they're a cool addition, but with the marks and stuff. But um, thematically, I guess for me, I'm a bit like mm, I see. I'm, I'm the not... opposite. I'm the opposite. I, that's, that's good. That's good. Because of the, like the, so for anyone that doesn't know, my Chaos Army is Step Tribe themed. So because of the right. aesthetic of ogres being like slightly Mongolian or Step Tribe-y in aesthetic, yeah. I really like them for my Chaos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Actually, I see that. Yeah, yeah. Because they've, they've I, got I, like I, the Fu Manchus and stuff, haven't they? I'm I'm completely coming from my own selfish mind of okay. being like no they're not they're not for me I'm not taking them but anyone else for your army you, especially your army yeah like you said that that is pretty on theme yeah and they they go everywhere right the ogres just get about so yeah I think the main thing to say with this we've got like I've already done an ogres guide if someone's mm. a more in depth version of ogres that might be the best place to start but because yeah. it's essentially you start off with a regular ogre, except you've got undivided and heavy armor, which means that you're on a five up, which is the same as an iron guts unit. Mm. And you've got undivided for rerolling your leadership of seven, which is all right. Yeah. Because There's one here, thing I can nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've got additional hand weapons for three points, and with Mark of Corn for to make you 39, you can go to five attacks a model, which is incredibly good. So yeah, for, that is incredibly good. For 200 points, I've got a front rank that's 200 mil wide. So the same as, say, like seven Chaos Warriors almost. 200 mil wide, so not too unwieldy with a movement of six. And I've got 26 attacks in that, including the champion, mm. which is you know, like terrifying. I think with that amount of attacks output. I quite like these with great weapons and Marcus Slanesh. <laughs> you like everything with great weapons and Marcus Slanesh. I do, but th this particularly, actually, thinking about it, because of the movement, mm. because of the movement's good, they can definitely tend to get the charge in before other people. And, you know, you, you get always strike first, applied to you straight away, then you add the charge bonus to modifiers. Mm. So, so you get what minimum three if you're charging on the front rank, yeah, right? plus three, plus three, plus the Marcus Nash. So, you're going to be what initiative. initiative five, yeah, that's pretty good on the charge, yeah. And I know that applies with, to with, all a, with a great weapon, yeah. I know that applies to all units, but it's more likely here, I think, is what you're yeah. saying, isn't it? Like, yeah, because exactly, of that exactly. additional movement, yeah, exactly. And you know. I think that's that tipping point of going from initiative four to five can make a huge difference. Yeah, it means you're striking simultaneous with elves. <laughs> yeah, like, with a great, awesome. but you've got a great weapon now. Yeah, it's awesome. Really good. And that's and you've got impact hits one, 
as well as ogre charge. So if you take a you do take a big unit, say like four hundred points worth of ogres for ten. Mm. The front five get AP minus one if you've got a lot of rank bonus. If you've mm. got two ranks, you get two, but I think that's far too excessive. Do what I think that'd be really I think it would be fun though. <laughs> what do what you sold me. You sold me you, you sold me. I'm taking chaos ogres now. <laughs> no, I I think they're really fun. As yeah, unit, that's what I think. That, and you can just have like have them dotted around as unit fillers in most yeah. games. Like just like <sighs> filling out the units and then you're like, oh this game I fancy using a unit of Chaos Ogres and you just put them together in a clump. And it adds to that sort of like hard feel. So mm. my marauders are bulked out by like my ogre that is in the middle of them. It would look really cool on the table. It it just gives them that like varying height. Yeah. And yeah. by varying the height of the models, it adds to the, the chaoticness. Yeah, the monstrous horde is approaching from the north. What do we do? Close the doors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Except you've got great weapons and you're an ogre. So yeah. that's not help. <laughs> Compared to these, though, we've got trolls. Hmm. And at 41 points a model, you get the same movement, weapon skill. You get the same toughness, wounds, attacks. But what's different is you get strength five, but leadership four. Uh, it's the leadership four, though, with the stupid... Is it they're stupid still? I can't even see. Yeah, you've got, yeah. So you've got stupidity. <laughs> so you pretty much... Un, I would say, I would say, near unusable. Yeah. <laughs> with, because of that stupidity. You've got regeneration five, which is which is good, but it still counts to combat res. So if you lose yeah. combat by taking a bunch of wounds, and you're only as tough as a Chaos Warrior, so for three wounds with the Chaos Trolls, you could have three Chaos Warriors. Yeah. Which I, just I know what I'd rather have. It. Yeah. It, that le the leadership and stupidity, I think, just kills them. I Even just wish they had... I just wish they had, like, an additional rule somewhere in that... Because it feels like there's something missing. I don't... Is there, what, what is it that makes them Chaos Trolls as opposed to normal trolls in that? The picture at the bottom of the page. Is that the only difference? <laughs> yeah, as far as I know. Like, yeah, still... like, the, the stat-wise, they just look exactly the same as normal trolls. Yeah. He's... What I would say as my advice on taking them is take whichever additional hand weapon or great weapon you want and just model them how you want because I think yeah. they can look cool. But I would much rather take the Chaos Ogre than the Chaos yeah. Troll. Me yeah, too. Fair to say? Yeah, me, yeah, I'm sure. Oh, oh, crack it. We're knocking this out. Let's get some more hard agree by going on to Forsaken. Now, this potentially could have come at the Chaos Warrior Marauder Chosen. Like yeah, because the, the count the count was cool, but yeah, well, I I I wanted to split them up as like into yeah. like memorable groups, but mm. so that I suppose they will be competing with chosen like chaos warriors and marauders, but to me the unit is slightly different, and so I put them with the more chaosy stuff like a troll, and yeah. just before we get into the more chaosy elements as well, um, because I and it's your. And it's your YouTube channel and you do what you want. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And I thought the comparison would get too broad because we've already yeah. compared three units. So, so how I like to run these and why I put them differently is that I see them as a sacrificial unit. So I've been tending to take like six or eight in a single line and just throwing them in and just, you guys go and die. Like you just right. hit the enemy first. With your slightly faster movement, get up there fast. Because they've got movement five, weapon skill four, strength toughness four like a warrior. They've got initiative three, but they will go to six if you're charging. D3 attacks mm. for random attacks, which is good. And it's, it's sometimes the same as a Chaos Warrior. But a lot of the time, it's as good as chosen, and sometimes even better. You've got Chaos Armor 5 up to match Heavy Armor. So you've got a 5 up, 5 up. I think that's really good. Oh, in incredibly good. It's the same as Chaos Knights, right? It's, it's Armor 5 up, or Chaos Armor 5 up, which is 
Mm. If I do say, very, very good. Or the same as a chosen Chaos Knight, I mean. Because mm. what other type of Chaos Knight is there? Um, we'll find out later in the guide. <laughs> so, so you've got the Rampant Mutation special rule, which can get you either poisoned attacks, which I'm always a bit upset when I roll that. You've got <laughs> Razor Talons, which is AP minus two. But because you've got ensorcelled weapons and you're still using hand weapons, you actually become AP minus three. Which, which is, is loco. The best. And then Killing Blow. Now, I'm not super upset when I roll it, and I know it just like kills a man sized model. Mm. But. And cavalry. And, cav and cavalry. But yeah. at AP minus three on that three four. And I'm not relying yeah. on a six. I prefer more attacks at AP minus three than a few attacks getting killing blow personally. Because I just like the reliability, yeah. the reliability of that. I think look realistic. I actually look at that, and I don't like. I know venomous fence isn't great, but I still think all those results are good. But I wouldn't be like well, I'm because I'm going to be taking forsaken in my list. Mm. Um, I'm not upset by any of those results. I, I think I maybe over-egged for that one. I'm not like, these guys are fucking worthless now that I've rolled the one. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, but I, I actually, I think like, because of the amount of weight of dice they do actually throw into combat, mm. I think a few sixes just getting through the wounding stage is actually pretty lit. <laughs> yeah, well, if you get the random attacks, and obviously you'll get, you'll average out on two. But because yeah. of Furious Charge, if you just throw them into something, you're on three attacks with that. Yeah. Which then, say like you've got, as I said, like a rank of, let's just say six. Yeah. Because you've been going six in the Chaos Warriors. So what, well, what is your what is your setup? I've said my single rank so, of Berserkers. I am building a six wide unit, three back, that I want to run as I know that's I know people might be going, what the hell is he doing? Because of the um is it the impetuous rule where on four plus you have to charge yeah. the unit. I don't care. I look at them as if they charge at something, they're gonna probably do quite a bit of damage to it. And they do tend to stick around just due to the stubborn rule. Um which they have also inbuilt, which we didn't touch yet. But I I could be completely wrong. I might be playing them completely wrong when I actually get around to using them. But I love the idea of this big blob of freaks <laughs> running forward, rushing into it. I just think like six wide as well would be quite tasty. Yeah, well, he's, he's potentially... When you're not charging, mm. it's potentially 18 attacks. Yeah. And when you are charging, six wide is potentially 24 attacks, which is great. I also take Mark of Corn on mine. I, I would also take Mark of Corn. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Hatred All Enemies special rule by taking Mark of Corn, which is free for Forsaken. Amazing. Oh, <laughs> so Hatred good. is, wow. Like, you universally love rule. It's so Are good. Are you sure you wouldn't prefer magic resistance, Colin? For the... No. Mm, no. No. <laughs> Unless you're playing relentless, sort of. High Elf Wizard Spam or something like that. Don't see it. Slanesh, I think he's quite good with the Swift Stride, just guaranteeing that charge, popping off your Furious yeah. Charge more and getting you to that glorious initiative six. Fear, you're gonna, it doesn't fit my playstyle because it comes into... Mm. Or when I say playstyle, I mean for this unit specifically. It, you're going to want a lot of models in there to benefit from yeah. Fear. And I just don't tend to want to run these like that. Yeah, I'm neither here or there about the fear bit of Nurgle. Um, I don't think it goes off often enough. I, I think Corn stands out so much more on a pedestal than the others. Yeah. Like, it's the pinnacle. And all the others are... Again, it's free, right? So all the others, are you look at it and go, oh, these are all free. But that hatred one is... Just a premium fit, fit free one. So um, I think you would just... Do you remember veterans? When they yeah. used to have... Like, yeah. 30k veterans. When they used to yeah. have the the skill and everyone took machine killer or sniper. Yeah. 
because they were free, so you always mm. just chose the best one. I, I think this is going to be the same. It, I prefer yeah. points costed stuff. I mean, take them down by two points and make everything else one point and corn three points. And I think that's pretty spot on. Yeah. Or something like that, or Slanesh two points. Whatever. But I think it's too much of an auto take of Khan. Yeah. Obviously, if you're playing a single god themed army, then yeah, the other ones are, look, it will look cool. But if you're purely for like a looking at the rules perspective, uh, Corn is just amazing. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Now, what's weird is because you, it'll be the only army that, if you've taken a fully Khan army, it'll be the only unit in the army that doesn't always have to charge it will only have to charge 50 percent of the time <laughs> it's bizarre right yeah and they're the one they're the ones that are crazier crazy. <laughs> they should be crazier think law wise they should be like the mutant freaks well, they're they're the going, normal going, ones in a car yeah, yeah exactly they're going mm, not sure about that one <laughs> what's everyone else doing <laughs> yeah <laughs> what happened to the plan guys <laughs> right so let's get on to the let's get on to the next one Let's go on to Chaos Spawn. And for 50 points is a special choice. You can get one to four. So obviously everyone's going to take 20 individual spawns, right? <laughs> because they are unbreakable. <laughs> Cause fear, but that's by the by, because your unit strength isn't that high. Um, immune to psych. You're unbreakable as well. Open order. Random attacks, D6. Random movement, 2d6, and stomp attacks, 1, which is good because it auto-hits. Armor Bane, 2 as well. Oh, I missed that out, yeah. Yeah, Armor Bane, 2. So you've got weapon skill, 3, strength, 4, toughness, 5, 3 wounds. So similar to an ogre, but one more toughness. Leadership, 10, by the bike, because you're unbreakable. Mm. Um, and you get to choose one of the... Corn Nurgle Slanesh Zinch for points costed this time. Corn... But they're all very interesting. Yeah, well, Corn gives you killing. Well, blow. two of them are interesting. <laughs> I would say, yeah, I would yeah. agree. Corn gives you killing blow. Nurgle gives you poisoned attacks. Not too asked about that. Is okay. Yeah. Spawn of Slanesh gives you strikes first, which is. Ooh. <laughs> Oof. And Spawn of Zeech gives you flaming attacks, magical attacks. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. This this is the ubiquitous like yeah. blocker in the army. I wouldn't expect it to do too much damage. I'd have it sitting around. And if you give it killing blow or strikes first, it's gonna take out a dude, a couple of dudes. I and think the corn one might be a big deter deterrent for anyone trying to charge you and this is sitting in the way and they've got a character in the unit and they're like if i don't kill that <laughs> that might just kill and blow my yeah, character my <laughs> <gonna do. laughs> yeah. um so it's there is a mind game element to the corn one which i really really love because <laughs> it's because like, because obviously they look at because it's top just five so you might not you might not kill it it's got three wounds and it's got it has got heavy armor um, yeah, you might and I get suppose really... you could take four of them for two hundred and twelve. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Points. That's what I'm saying. They're cheap as well for what they are. Like I think two units of two sitting round your like your big strong units marching up on the flanks from anyone flying about. They'd be like, obviously there's things in, around that dragons, blah blah blah. But if you've got like a character on a mount who's on cavalry. He might not want to be hanging around the, charging the flanks because he might be like, oh, if I don't kill those. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's bad news bears. It, it, but he's, as you say, I think he's a good threat on that corn yeah. one. I found yeah. my Zinch one to be completely non benefiting from yeah. flaming and magical. Like, magical is, is a benefit because it helps against ethereal, but. My warriors and champions and stuff already have that. Yeah. So I don't need it here. Slanesh strikes first is good because you've only got initiative three. I think that'll be cool on the big bigger block of them. 
as opposed to the two I said. I think if you took a, a unit of four, or if, like, yeah, they are 54. Four and 24 attacks are going first. What? Yeah. It's... <laughs> uh, I think we have different I think it's pretty... images of a spawn in our heads. Yeah. Because mine's like I feel... of a, yeah. a day of the Triffids style. <laughs> <laughs> style spawn. But yeah, he's, I think he's a really good charge blocker. I think yeah. he's a really good, like, not offensive flanker, but mm. for guarding your own flanks. He could just motor 12 and take off. Yeah. But he's going to average about the same speed as your infantry. I'm going to I'm gonna take some, because I really want to try them out, because I think they're cheap enough that you can fit them in into a list and be like, right, this might really have come into some use for 50 points or 53 because I'll be taking corn. So I, I really like my one that I've got for just being super annoying to people. Mm. It can be really annoying when the move... The reason I'm not invested in more is when you do roll that double one on movement. Mm. It's like, oh, I could have done with that moving 12 this turn and you failed. This yeah. Turn. It's like rolling stupidity on your lord. Yeah. It's... Oh, it just sometimes happens and you're like, oh. I think I'm going to take two units of one for now and then I'll eat my hat when I do the double one thing and I might roll to one, a single one. But I think for now I'm, I'm going to roll roll with two units of one because I think that's still cheap enough to... Yeah, no, I, I'm looking, I'm tr- I would have been unit running two units of one. I've just not found a second model that I like yet. Oh, okay, cool. I've, yeah. I've got my Sentai horse. Mm. that is painted to look like a maggot but it's a sentai horse Um, and I want to find another mutant horse oh my god I think I know one that you could do I think I know a a reverse centaur model oh really? yeah I can actually sense it yeah yeah, so it's a dry, it's actually like a panto horse head with just this human legs hanging out from the bottom of it. Oh, it yeah. looks mental. I'll send I'll send it to you after this. Right, quality. <laughs> and let's move on to Chaos Knights. Yeah. Now, these are I would say useful for one role. But I think they're very, I think they're very, very good. Mm. And they're really good at what they do. But ca- chosen chaos knights exist, so they that, pale that's in the... a bit against chosen knights because they're competing directly against them. And that's the problem I have with them is that I'm like, yeah, those chaos knights are cool, but man, those tri- chosen, those knights, chosen knights, they're chosen knights. <laughs> it's like that meme of the you know that. Yeah, that guy is holding his girlfriend's hand and he's walking away and he looks over his shoulder and he just sees chosen knights over there. Well, that, that's <laughs> it. And he's, he's chosen knights are the chosen knights of yeah. the old world. And yeah. It's like that old fantasy thing. Like, oh, what's the chosen knights of this game? The chosen knights are the chosen knights of this game. Um, now, what chaos knights do, weapon skill five, strength toughness four, initiative four, one attack, leadership eight. Very similar slash exactly the same to a Chaos Warrior. However, what is different is you've got unit side four up, heavy armor, shields, and a barded Chaos Steed, who is strength four notably, because Chaos Steeds are strong. You've got assaulted weapons, first charge, so ignore rank bonus on the charge, mark of undivided, swift stride, because you're cavalry. Mm. Now, Lance is two points a model, taking to 29 points. I think it's definitely worth it. For that minus two AP, because you're gonna be charging. Corn, you've got too long of a charge range for me to want to take corn, even though it adds that additional attack. You can just yeah. be baited out by fast cavalry so easily that I just don't that I just don't like it, and it's too much of an investment in a big block to be taking it. Um, Nurgle. It's good. It saves you. War- it saves you knights a bit. Slanesh plus one initiative. I think is potentially the best one on this list. I've yeah. been running mine with undivided just to make sure. I'd... Just, oh, well, do you know what? No more thought. I was going to lie about my thought process because I was just going to say something, but 
because everyone else is undivided in my army at the moment. Um, Zinch, five of them gets your sorcerer plus one casting roll, which is quite good. Mm. Now, of course they do, yeah. Yeah, it's only five for them because it's based on unit strength. Yeah. How I like to run Chaos Knights, how you could run them like a seven wide block with full command and charge them at something, and they'll do slightly better than most other people's heavy cavalry because you are slightly better than most other people's heavy cavalry. Mm. How I like to do them is in units of four with a champion and musician and lances. Oh, uh, really? And that is because it catches everyone out when I flee a charge with Chaos Knights. Because no <laughs> one expects Chaos Knights <laughs> to flee as a no, champion. No, no. I wouldn't either. I'd be like, what, what are you playing at? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you just like, bam, there's some Marauder Horse into the flank yeah. of you. And I've got a un- I've got a, an aspiring champion in that unit. And Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So that that is one. It's a slight, slightly flippant use. Their actual use, other than when catching someone out with that, of a unit of four I've found, is it's really good for just a throwaway unit of like, my opponent's got a giant. If I put a unit into them that isn't like my lord I'm probably going to have a few people die and I don't really want to put my lord into there mm. so what I do is I throw a unit of this 100 point 110 point unit of chaos knights in there and expect them to do two or three wounds with their strength 6 yeah and then I can be pretty sure that an aspiring champion and some marauders can run in there and just finish off whatever it is so it's just like a, a sacrificial, very low-key unit that's very manoeuvrable because it's only four of them. Low on the threat cool. list. I think I haven't thought about it. That, well, sorry, let me rephrase it. I haven't, you know, I haven't, I haven't put that process in my head of using them that way. Um, it's actually really interesting, actually. for Because they do, yeah, the starting size is four, so you can keep them at that. Because in your head, you always sort of go... Why is it not five? Why is it not five? Why is it not five? Um, but yeah, that's really cool. I like that idea. Yeah, it's a nice little just flanking thing that people go, oh, it's, it's four things. And they, what, they're not chosen? Like, I'm, mm. I'm not going to worry about them because there's some chosen over there or you've got your lord over the other side. And then you just run in and assassinate a wizard or, do you know, like take down a small unit or, yeah, I don't know, like destroy a chariot or something that your opponent was wanting to flank you with, and it's just a nice little throwaway unit. You might you might even get them in the flank as well, and they'll, they'll do mayhem in the flank. Well, yeah, four is enough to break ranks of a, a non-heavy yeah. infantry unit. Yeah, it's really useful. It's and I would recommend I would recommend people having that one unit a hundred points, and it's four attacks worth. I might have plus, the, plus the chaos steeds. Shall we get? Shall we get onto the one that I are that I already saw? Yes. Yeah, let's do it. So, the one that I already spoiled. Chaos chosen knights. They are the chosen oh. knights of fantasy. They've got a normal chaos knight stat line, except they've got two attacks and leadership nine for thirty six points. Hand weapons, heavy armor shields, and salted weapons, barred in strength four horse, all looking very similar except for those two attacks. But those two attacks is massive. Mm. But it's then, huge. But yeah, yeah. And then you get down to drilled and heavy armor exchange for full plate, and you're like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's they suddenly become. Don't like using the phrase because it's used too much, but that type of Death Star unit where you. The, dis- the, r- the charging Death Star unit that just runs into things and murders. Yeah. Yeah, and, it's, and they do just sweep... There's lots of times where I play it... Or I have played it too conservative with yeah. my Chosen Knights. And it's just like, well, I should have just piled them in. Because any time that I seem to, like... Outside of, like, you know, some... I do have to be slightly careful with them, and it's a bit flippant yeah, yeah, yeah. of me to say, but... A lot of the time I get caught out and when there's like my lord in there 
I like they just seem to batter anything. They just yeah. don't care. Now putting your lord in there does deny them counter charge, which is one of their special rules. But still, it's a chaos lord and then two attack knights. And they've got a six up chaos armor, sorry, not a five up that I said before. But they seem to just batter and you know they, they do just batter their way through mm. things. Like regardless. And just drilling up twenty one inches, like being on your opponent's table edge or to, or deployment zone edge after the first turn is just incredible. Or even I think just deploying even... them on one side and going bam. I'm now over the other side of the battlefield. I think even not even putting a character in them, they're still just insane. I don't think you can worry about stuff like that sometimes with this sort of unit. No, well, my my lord tends to hang out with a Chaos Marauder Horseman unit because yeah. they, like, need the lord. Mm. Whereas the Chosen Knights, like, it was more just that it, they are that powerful to have a lord in and not get caught out. And it, that it denies them counter charge. I don't think you actually need it in there, as you say. Like, yeah. they they are tough enough to handle themselves. And I tend to run seven of them. Mm. And when they get counter, they when they get charged, they counter charge anything that they're truly scared of, like other cavalry. Or not truly scared of, but truly might have a problem with. Yeah. And they counter charge, and now I'm striking. Like initiative six, if not more. Yeah. And I'm going to have my lances and two attacks each. So I've got 15 attacks because of my champion. I think even just throwing in, like, you could even just throw a buff spell on them. Like, just like, just some like throw away buff spell. And then you'd be like, oh my God, just like, just tip that over the edge to insane levels. So something on demonology or something like that. Just they are often go. the target of my buff spells unless yeah. unless my marauders like really have to go into a really hard unit yeah my chaos knights very often get that buff yeah and it's i can't recommend them enough like it's sort of it's sort of like we're going to agree so hard on chaos knights yeah i, th I don't think we need to it's... talk about them that much they're just they're just good and like they do what they say you know it's very hard it's very hard to try and fault them it, um, it, yeah, it's hard to have a good conversation about something that's incredibly, yeah, incredibly good. Right, let's go on to Dragon Ogres next. Now, this is like a loan unit from the Beastman list, so you can use it as it's just part of the list. It's just the entries in the Beastman. Yeah, list, is what I mean. Um, I put this after Chaos Knights because I think this is the most direct comparison to where you're going to be using them. Like, because after drilled lances and full plate get added to chaos knights mm. it's around this sort of points level like it, your 36 goes to like 44 maybe 47 including a mark and so it's it's in competition with dragon ogres dragon ogres you've you've got movement seven like chaos knights but you've not got swift stride so you are slower especially or at least mm. for charging you've got strength five just base weapon skill four so you'll be hitting more opponents on fours than chaos knights would be who tend to hit things on threes toughness four is the same as a lot of your army but four wounds each make them really survivable mm. initiative two means that i'm usually using a great weapon because i'm initiative really low anyway like it feels almost useless useless to me to take a halberd because yeah. a lot of the time I'll still just be striking last three attacks though is great leadership eight yeah it's okay shard attacks four attacks I would take one because it's only seven points for the shard attack yeah I'd definitely be taking heavy armor my shard attack I don't tend to upgrade any further than that with magic weapons or anything like that um, and you're going to be on a three up save with close order fear. Stomp attacks two is incredibly good. So essentially, your five attacks a model. Quickening storm means that. So, quickening storm, a model with a special rule has a five up ward save against any wounds suffered that were caused by a magic missile or a magic vortex. In addition, 
If a model with a special rule or the unit it belongs to suffers one or more hits from the storm's call, which we'll get to because that's a shag off rule, it becomes quickened. A quickened model has its has plus one modifier to both its initiative and its attack characteristics. This quickening lasts until your next start of the turn subphase. So it's worthwhile doing. That is, I think, one. Yeah, of it's the a cool it's worth bonus saying. rule. Yeah, um, I think dragon ogres are really good. They're one of the premier units. The fact that I think they're comparable to chosen knights, I think, it says a lot about how good this unit is. Like using them in like threes or even twos, mm. I found effective because of that. Like basically five attacks each, but threes tends to be like really popping, like not too mm. non not too unmaneuverable. And just really hard hitting. Great weapons because I've already got five attacks. I don't I don't need six, but what is really good is when you have strength seven and minus two AP. Yeah, you're initiative two anyway, so Yeah, it's not too like there's not too much of a choice, is there, between mm. like halberds and great weapons, although it will mean you strike at initiative five on the charge rather than four. Yeah. Ah, just take the great weapon to just batter anyone into submission. Yeah, I'm all I'm already wounding. Toughness three people. On twos anyway, so if mm. I'm really bothered, I'll just hit them with my hand weapon. Yeah, and and still be. Initiative five, so yeah, it's. I think they're they're really good. Again. Like it's, it's similar to Chaos Knights. I do think they they fulfil a similar role. They tend to be mm. like good either mid battle line or flanks. There is something to be said for that. Four wounds, meaning that they've got to they've effectively got to do seven wounds before you lose yeah. the second model. Or they've got to do eight have... wounds. They've got to do eight wounds before you lose the second model. Seven keeps one alive. It's, it's the stomp two as well. Yeah. I think the stomp two really helps in that addition. Now, I think they could just blend a lot of... For a ch like, you know, I would say they're like... A, like a cheaper version of a chosen unit, but slightly less good. Uh, but if you wanted something to do essentially what chosen do but not to the same extent maybe this is the unit to go for yeah so two of them being like 112 points i could have four chosen almost yeah but four chosen versus eight wounds with the dragon ogres that's eight attacks from the the chosen knights versus ten attacks here. And yes, the the stomps obviously don't get an AP. You're not getting AP lance. Mm. It's very much a choice thing, and I think they do play slightly differently. But I think it's, I think there's no real wrong choice between them. They're slightly no. more job dependent, and as you say, a bit better at blending rather than having that all the time lance yeah the shot attack as well uh can take a chaos mutation and purchase of items both up to 25 points as well and the chaos mutations it can take are from the beastman tree yeah you see i think for me they're just that bit too expensive yes so i agree is that putting them on this unit the mutations i find are just a bit expensive yeah um it's not really where I want my points to be got. I'm I'm more of a boys over toys person. Yeah. And saying that That's it's already cool. quite an expensive list. Yeah. But for twenty five points, what else can I get with that? Well, I can almost get another Chaos Knight. And I'm yeah, I think sent of the way to another Dragon Ogre. And the other thing I think looking at Dragon Ogres anyway as well is that they are for for warriors is the rule of that when you t if you want a shag off. You have to have a, a unit of dragon ogres, and that's like part min of one, right? I suppose min what min min one, yeah. But I, I don't think you should do that. I think you should embrace embrace the unit for what they are. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, I, but I actually think it's a bit of a shame living one to nine because it does encourage you slightly to go, oh, it's 56 points of Dragon Ogre. I'm going to take a load of units of one. And I don't think that's the most fun way you could run a list. Is I think it that's boring. Potentially. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, as you say, I think it it'd be a bit. If someone showed up with like twelve individual dragon ogres to a game, yeah. I'd probably yeah not show up to game two. That's I'd arrange cool. game you're two. Not... I'd arrange game two, but I probably wouldn't show up to game two. As I say, you're not... but you're no fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So Shagoth, since you brought them up, yeah, Shagoth now. What to say about oh, these? What to say about these? Two hundred twenty-five points for movement seven, like all the dragon ogres. You get weapon skill six, so that's hitting the mighty chaos knights even on threes. You strength six, but you're gonna take a great weapon for four points. So let's call that strength eight. Toughness seven or toughness five. I'm still thinking plus two for the great weapon. Toughness five, six wounds. <laughs> Initiative four, but really one because you've got a great weapon, mate. Five attacks, leadership nine. You've got light armor, but that becomes heavy. And with armored high two, you're on a three up like all the dragon ogres. Stomp mm. attacks, D3 plus one. So you minimum the same amount as another dragon ogre with an additional strength for that stomp. You've got ensorcelled weapons. So if you don't want to use your great weapon, you really want to strike at initiative seven on the charge. You're still at minus one AP. And you're yep. going to be wounding a lot of things on twos anyway. But I do think it's worth that great weapon for minus two AP just as an option. Yeah. I, so I'll get to how I would tool mine up, but there's a, another important rule with the Dragon Ogre shag off is it's got Storm's Call. Yes. Now, do you want me to read it out, or do you want to? Just summarise. Just summarise if you... So, it counts as a bound spell level 1, and it can even be cast when you're engaged. The type is Magic Missile, so that's the shooting phase. If this bound spell is cast, all units within 6 inches of this model, friend or foe, including units engaged in combat with this model, Suffer D three, D three strength four hits, each with an AP of minus one. Now I think that's good. It's good for a little kicker. Yeah, it's, mainly it's amazing. Good for setting off the quickening storm on both yes. this dragon ogre Shagoth and your dragon ogres. Because it hits you as well. Yes. Yeah, and it, with the strength four, say you roll two hits. Yeah. The strength four means that you're going to average like 0. 0.6 wounds to the Shagoth, and then you're going to save yeah. half of them anyway. Normal and dragon get... ogres. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to. Oh, you're going to get the ward from the. Yeah. The quickening storm. And. Yeah. He... You're going to save half of them. You're only going to win with half on the dragon ogres and then save half. It's it doing get... basically no damage to you and just setting off your own special ability. You're going to get your four-up save, your five-up ward. I, like, how I build... Can we talk about mutations now? Yeah. Yeah, let's... Yes. I'll tell you what, let's, let's go to the mutations page. So, Chaos Mutations, just... We've already, me and Phil, gone through this on the Beasts video, so if you want a full breakdown of the, of the mutations, head over to the Beasts video. Callum, do you want to just tell us what your recommended build and why is? So I like mine, firstly with many armed, many limbed fiends for 20 points. So you can have 50 points of um, mutation. So I start with the 20 point one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's many limbed fiend. This model, but not mounted, has plus one modifier to attack characteristics. However, this first attack may not be made, but must be made with an ordinary hand weapon. But that's fine because that's sense. how I because I'm strength six and that's how I build mine. I don't give mine a great weapon. Do um, my, I don't know because um, I'm going to get to the second part why I don't take a great weapon because um, I want the bonus attack from that with the many limbed fiends um, and I take gorge tusks which is thirty points 
Uh, so during the combat phase, the armor piercing characteristic of any weapon used by this model is improved by one. So the way I build is I take them two and I take a talisman of protection, so a 30 point one for five up ward. And I run this guy in and he's super tanky. He has a three up armor save. He has a five up ward, huge stats, and he's hitting with six attacks, weapon skill six, strength six, minus two to your armor save. And then followed by that, he has a stomp attack, D3 plus one. Um, I think that is bananas. I think that's really good. Um, I think, I think you like you saying with a great weapon is also very good, but there's how I want to use mine in my army. I see. I call, many limbed fiend it's only that additional attack that's made using the hand weapon so you can actually mm. take a great weapon while yeah yeah of course many fiend. And i i, I also like to have it yeah you can also stack that with a great weapon yep. for a minus three ap that i think you then just slam in any yeah yeah any night like, i think there is a a shout out to the crown of everlasting conquest as well mm -hmm. like he's the the talisman of protection is i think better as you said yeah. before because it's not getting combat res so i think that's the better suggestion but i just wanted yeah. to say it because if you've already taken sort of any of the magic items that you can't take again i yeah. think like do you know getting a five up like additional save is just worthwhile yeah on such a big monster that's got to be the center of a load of cannon fire essentially yeah i i quite like um taking the non-great weapon one just for running in and just killing everything in front of him before they get to hit back it's just like murdering everything because yeah you see the great weapon he'd still be hitting on yeah initiative four but if he's if he's if he's getting the charge which he probably will because he's movement seven that's like initiative seven on the charge which is pretty crazy yeah, it, um, it gets to that mental levels, I suppose. I think I think both of them, like your one particularly, is good as well. Like very good, but I think both of them are very reasonable. Very yeah, reasonable. Well, I, I think it's probably list dependent, as yes. you know, like I yeah. think both are worthwhile. And actually, it's it's both the same build. I think is what we're recommending. It's just, do you use a hand weapon or great weapon? I think it might. Yeah. It's probably even worth taking a great weapon, regardless of yeah. whether or not you use it. Yeah, yeah, and it's then, true, because you can, can't you? Yeah, and then you just choose, like, which way am I going to use it and just don't be scared not to use the great weapon. Yeah, I mean, it's four points, isn't it? You just take it and then if I don't want to use it, I don't want to use it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's Dragon Ogre Shad Shagoths. Bad, that's enough said. <laughs> yeah, and he's, he's back onto a bit more of generic, not generic horsemen, but ordinary, like, cavalry. Rather than like Sentai cavalry, Sentai ogres, Sentai yeah, dragon <laughs> ogres. Anyway, yeah, I think so. Anyway, we've got twelve points for a Marauder horseman, which is a Marauder with weapon skill four, threes across the board for the strength, toughness, initiative, leadership six, human stats. Right, you've got leadership seven and two attacks on the champion. Yep. And this is potentially my favourite individual unit in the list. Mm. Yes, because well, because I'm playing the like a step tribe, right? So yeah, of course. Light cavalry, and also has both the open order and skirmishers rule. You don't really care. I, I don't really think you care about skirmishers that much, anyway. Yeah. Oh, sorry, open order. You don't care about open order that much, anyway. I think. Yep. Because you're just treating them like a normal unit. Like you do deploy in open order sometimes, but I wouldn't worry about the benefits being not becoming disruptive because I never take them with an additional rank. Because mm. what I do do is put an aspiring champion in as many units as possible. And Which is awesome. Yeah, then you're the same leadership as if you had an additional rank. I take yeah. a rank of six with an aspiring champion. You see how this seven keeps cropping up over and over again. Um. I I take them with flails because flails are excellent and I'm going to be getting that charge. Javelins, really useful, I found, 
like for the move, oh. fire, quick shot, throw in the additional range. Like, yeah, throwing axes are stronger, but I like the distance that you sit at with javelins. I much prefer for the enemy getting fail charges all the time. Oh, okay. And having the fire and flee undivided is really good for for being able to like rally, do things that you want. Uh, oh no, it's only yeah. fear, panic, and terror, isn't it? But it's undivided is re- I think really good for the role. And I think how you play aspiring champions nearby for rallying cry. I think how you play your army, particularly, they're so cool. They're so cool, and how they play and how they interact with the rules. Um, I think they are. I think they are a solid, solid unit for their points. Yeah, like super cheap. It comes to like one oh six points for six of them, with champion, yeah. musician, flail, javelin, shields, mm. and and that is how I would run them. Is standard bearer? I think your unit is too. It dies too often for me to want to give yeah. away a, a fifty percent increase of a unit price. Yeah, I prefer the unit to just die by one one point of combat res. They yeah. give away a banner every time my unit of six dies. And they get yeah. Yeah, they got pummeled by like organ guns and hell blasters and I mean bases. most things do get yeah. pummeled by it. So yeah, well, even uh, like if it's some if it's... stuff, you die to both. Yeah. But you just don't care because they're like twelve yeah. points a month. I'm uh, uh, fourteen points a month. Who cares? Fully upgrade it. Do you get have you tried any of the marks on them? Mark of Zinch, I found because it really having that like movement eight, yeah. joining the sorcerer. So, so yes, you go to movement seven. But having been effectively able to be an infantryman marching all the time in open yeah. order, so that like yes, you're wheeling round, but you can you're just quite manoeuvrable, and I'm mm. I'm fast cavalry, so you can open order, move your march, and then turn the 90. Yeah. Which is so good. Which is so, so good. So actually, do you know what I said? Do you know when I said you're not worried about open order for the the difficult terrain before? That's what you want open order for here. Yeah. It's actually useful because you can march and do it. Um, I quite like Marcus Slash them again. To go back to the Slash again, I quite like Marcus Slash them again. Um, just because, like you said, if they're getting picked off by things, mm. uh, shooting, just having them immune to panic is just pretty cool as well. It's like, well, I don't care. Yeah, they. I, I'd agree. Like, Khan, I think you lose control of the unit too much for it being such a light yeah. unit. And that's why I'm terrified of stupidity is the same thing. Just losing control of such a light unit is just crap. Yeah. Nurgle, I don't think you get enough out of the survivability. And they're not worth the points of adding Nurgle to them. Mm. Like they just they just die too easy. It's not even a big block of marauders that really benefit from it. Slanesh is exactly what you're trying to be doing with them. It's charging, hitting hit hard, hit fast, no mercy. Yeah. And it's everything that you're trying to be doing. Zing. It's a no mercy bit, right? Like just like, yeah, we've lost some dudes, we don't care, we're still coming around the side. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it just fits with exactly what this the unit's role is really. Zinch, yeah. I, I've been taking like before I started taking undivided because in sixth, so two hundred years on in the timeline, that was who my general worshipped. Oh, awesome! But because I've gone back to undivided, everyone's now undivided again. So I might split a bit more and take different marks in the future. But yeah, that's how I like to run them. Yeah, awesome. And that's I've really done proved... a lot of inspir- experimenting. Yeah, you've had quite a lot, lot of um, you know, games put into it to really give the feedback towards it as opposed to me. But um, I looking at them on paper, not, never really using them, I think they're wicked. Yeah, yeah. And it's like we were talking about the Lever Chaotica before, right? And yeah. Or not like immediately before, but like a bit ago. And the Hung, the Kurgan, like two Mate. the two biggest tribes of chaos. 
amazing if any, of Marauder Horses. Everyone watching this video and they want to get some more law info dump. Libra Chaos, because I'm very fortunate I have got one. If you can download it or find some copy of it somewhere, do get it if you're worried of Chaos Player, because it's just chuck a block with like law and really interesting law of like how they work as a culture, not just for it. Yeah, Warriors Chaos, but all the other sub factions within that, mm -hmm. and where they are within the old world itself. So yeah, I, just to hit back on that Libra character, definitely get it if you're Warriors of Chaos player. Yeah, and it's I've not got it hard copy. It's it is available if you just search it out. Libra Chaos yeah. like a PDF, search it, and it'll be on online. And Games Workshop, I believe, stopped producing it a long time ago. So yeah. They, they did a limited run as per usual with everything they do. But, oh, did they? Um, yeah, they did. But um, which was a few years ago now. Um, but I'm lucky enough to pick one up. I, I count myself fortunate. You lucky son of a bitch. Ha <laughs> ha. Comparing that, we've got Chaos Warhounds. And yeah, I've said this. It's maybe not the best comparison. I just it, I just put them as a comparison point because. There's six points. Weapon skill four because it's chaos, so everyone's weapon skill four. Mm. Um, strength toughness three. Basically, you're a marauder stat line, except movement seven. And on a bigger base. Yeah. You've got loner, so no one can join them unless they've also got loner. Move through cover, open order, swift stride. You can take a handler and vanguard. Vanguard's really good for five points for the entire unit, regardless of how many you take. Mm. of just being down your opponent's throat they, they're they good for stopping corner units charging just throwing in the way of your opponents taking up drops when you're putting your, your deployments down just like here's a unit of dogs you can't see anything about my other 1970 points like, and then just doing that 3-4 times and you see most of your opponent's army before you have to start yeah, blocking a... anything worthwhile there is a good tactical element to them, just being like 30 point drops here, done. I get yeah. some vision. And then and then you just like get in the way of charges, force your opponent to deal with them. And if they do deal with them, they've not been dealing with the rest mm. of everything. Like I can't say enough good things about Chaos Warhounds. And they can have a handler as well, can't they? Yeah, do you know what? I've not used a handler just because I've not uh, got a model yet. I have only used Warhounds in the way you've described them as doing that and blocking charge charges of frenzy units and like forsaken and stuff like that. So I really don't know to touch ground with the handler because I've got nothing really to say. As we can read out what it does. It's basically um, it's a a weapon skill five, strength toughness four, initiative four, chaos warrior. I'm going to describe yeah. it as rather than a. But it is yeah, um, and it lets. Chaos Warhounds within its command range, which is eight, because its leadership is eight, it lets Chaos Warhound units within that range use its leadership. So your mm. Warhounds go from leadership six to eight, which is fairly good. It's movement five, so it's not slowing your Warhounds completely down to four. Yeah. it's If you were going to go super Warhound heavy and try and do something with, I don't know, like packs and packs and packs of Warhounds, Maybe you'd want a unit of five at the back behind other units that have a handler. So that... Yeah. Because they can use the leadership. You can't use a leadership of a, a BSB. But yeah, I, I'd i never really use one because I just treat them far more disposably than what this They've always, they always, always just been a bit of a weird unit because there were upgrades to give them. You just sort of just go, I don't really want to buy those upgrades, but... Yeah, there's just sort of a weird unit because to use them as those those chap unit first, but I've not I've never really someone going, Oh, do you what? Those warhounds, they're wicked. They're just sort of there. They're one of the best units in the list, I'd say, but just because you don't care about yeah, them. Yeah, because you, yeah, you yeah, expect exactly. them to be crap. Like Yeah, so. they just they have a they have a role, I guess. And that's yeah. That's it. And they're really good at that role. It's just that role is yeah. nothing. It's just expecting yeah. them to die. Armored hide I wouldn't take, poisoned attacks I wouldn't take, Vanguard I no. like. Just because mm -hmm. of that additional mobility. Um, and shall we go on to the next one? 
Yeah. And they, they've both got a place. Of, as I said, I'm comparing them to Marauders because they both like light ish. Yeah. But they both appear in my lists. I've got like. The similarities. Units. Yeah, I've got four to five units of Marauder Horse and then between two and four units of, Mara- of Chaos Warhounds in the same list. Yeah. Chariots. Oh boy. Chariots. So we've got Gore Beast and Chaos Chariots. Chaos Chariots are good. <laughs> Uh, yes. 110 points a model you come in units of 1 because it's a heavy chariot strength toughness 5 with 4 wounds you get chaos steeds with strength 4 hand weapons there's 2 of them chaos charioteers strength 4 1 attack each and they've got halberds so they'd be strength 5 with minus 1 AP or you can use your hand weapon for minus 1 AP but here you're going to use the halberd because it's built in and you can't take a shield so why mm. not have plus 1 strength yeah. You've got close order, which you can use because you're lumbering as a heavy chariot, so you can use it in a unit of one. In source of weapons, you don't really care that much unless you're going against Ethereal, which will let you yeah. strike with magical weapons. First charge is great for ignoring rank bonus. Hit, impact hits D6 plus one. Solid. Mark of Chaos Undivided. Solid. Um, I wouldn't use Corn. Frenzy's too uncontrollable. You've heard I think it too many the, times now. Go I on. think the best one is Nurgle. You're not gonna you're not gonna say Sunesh? No, I think Nurgle. Why? Because most things is this because most things at strength three will wound one sixes and you force them to re roll that. Exactly that. <laughs> Almost like we can both read. Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> yeah, Crazy, right? Yeah, like Zinch isn't doing much for you. You're not going to get to unit strength 10. No. Slanesh, really, the output of a chariot is mainly impact hits that's initiative 10 anyway. Yeah. So it's not doing as much for you, I think, is what... I think the stand... Yeah, the standing obvious one is Nurgle. Yeah. Yeah, to be. It's as well. And And they're all the same points as well. Yeah, and 110 points, 120 with Nurgle. He's really, he's really cheap for what that is doing. If you are charging with a unit of Marauders or Marauder Horse, throw in a Chaos Chariot, or even just normal Chaos Warriors, throw in a Chariot, your opponent now has no rank bonus. If they've yeah. got Warband, like Bretonian Men-at-Arms or Skaven or Goblins, throw the Chariot in. They've now got two to three less leadership. Which is incredible. massive. Yeah. Um, I think you're going to see chariot themed armies. I think they're that good with the Mark of Nurgle so as every, well. Everyone that had a Zinch chariot army in Sixth will now be <laughs> a Nurgle painting, chariot army. Yeah, painting them green. <laughs> Put green stuffing boils and all sorts into their chariots. Yes. So Gore Beast chariots. And I think it's a good mount for a Chaos Lord or a. Or maybe not a Chaos Lord. Do you know what? Yeah, Chaos Lord. It adds to his wounds. I don't know. I he's think a, you... He's a decent... It, the old Aspiring champion, champion idea is cool as well. Well, that's what I was going to say. Maybe not a Lord, maybe Aspiring Champion. But it, it's hard to go wrong with the Chariot. Like yeah. nowadays. Gore Beast Chariot 135 points. You've got Strength Toughness 5 again. The Gore Beast... Is three attacks, so an additional attack over the two horses, mm. and it's additional strength as well, but it's minus one movement, so you are going slower. You've got Armor Bane 1 on the Gore Beast attacks, Killing Blow on the Gore Beast attacks, though I don't see that popping off too much because it's only got three attacks total. Armor Bane will obviously only work when you are fighting bigger than man-sized or cavalry-sized models because Killing Blow just ignores the armour Yeah, when that pops off. But he's... To me, the strength 5, an additional attack, is worth 10 points. Yeah. Like, he's... Uh, he's... It's a weird one as well because it's gotten source of weapons... And then the Gore Beast has Goring Horns and they count as hand weapons. 
Yeah, and then comparing that to the Chaos Steed, which don't have it, you've got an additional attack, additional strength, and now an additional minus one to your AP. And an, and an additional impact to it as well. Ah, uh, because it's plus two rather than plus one, yes. Yeah. I think I would always take Gorby's chariots over normal chariots, personally. I think they're so good. Yeah, and they're so. I, I agree for the sheerly on points. I 100% agree with you. Now, as I believe this, the chariot is the Gore Beast is special versus. Oh no, it's rare versus the normal chariot. That's it. Ah, uh, you're right. Yeah, it is rare, isn't it? Yeah, versus the normal chariot being core. You're right, it being rare as well because it's bloody good. <laughs> yes, and when it's only that amount of points being rare, it's not too much of a hindrance. Like, I know it's competing with some other things like a hell cannon. But, yeah. Uh, it's just a it's just a toss up, I suppose. It's I think I'm gonna have to. I think I'm gonna have to get some Gorby's chariots. I really like them. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna branch out into some chariots, and we'll see what Gorbeasts come along after that for me myself. And I think just applying the Nurgorn to that as usual as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same as I think both chariots together would be good do you know like yeah if, like the, the breakdown that we sort of gave for the first chariot you're always mm. going to use your halberds on them it's yeah you know, it, you know, it's very similar other than those benefits and a slight points increase so next we've got the chimera Just... yep it's 180 points you've got movement six but actually gonna fly eight flight ten strength six toughness five four wounds Six attacks, leash it five, which is pretty rubbish. But you cause terror yourself, so you're not gonna have to take a terror check or fear check ever. No, you've got close order, and as a monstrous creature, which is a large target, you're lumbering, so you can benefit from that close order mm. as a single model. Armor Bane 2 is a bit eh, but you have got quite a few attacks to get at least one of them to pop off. Your Fiend Tail <laughs> is extra attacks D3, so I suppose that can also do your uh, Armor Bane. Yeah, I know it it's pretty cool. Because it's, it's claws and fangs only. Um, yeah, it is claws and fangs only, yeah. So... It doesn't actually have any minuses to its not natural attacks. No, because it's the claws and fangs count as a hand weapon. So yeah. I mean, for 180 points for a fly 10 model with terror, I think yeah. I still think it is very good. I think you fly this around just terrorizing skirmishes and you know just terrorizing the flanks of the armies. The idea of it is like I know art people artillery is artillery, but if you want to fly it at the you want to be a direct threat to your, to the artillery, that's a good piece of monster to deal with it. Yeah, and you can even fly off to the side of your enemy the enemy army, but still like behind stuff, and because you're a large target, you can see at the enemy artillery. So they're gonna yeah. have to blow you away that turn. And again, if they're firing at this, they're not firing at your chaos knights, your warriors. And that's going to mean those are going to get there that much sooner. Yeah. And with that, I would definitely take... I think the Fiend Tail, fairly decent, is extra attacks D3 for only 10 points. Regen 5, though, for 15 points. I would take that heartbeat, yeah. Yeah. Even ju just for, again, shooting, it's... Mm. Without question, I would be taking that. Would you take the Flaming Breath? I want to be march flying everywhere and charging all the time. So I'm not really probably that bothered about it. Because even yeah. I want to be able to charge into units and use that as a slingshot. Mm. Like rather than flying up to a unit or over a unit and flaming attacking it. So it's, I'd, I'd personally give that a miss. Yeah. And yeah, treat it more as a as a flanking unit than a a head-on unit. If you want a head-on unit or a head-on like flyer, 
take the dragon that's in the bottom of this picture and listen yeah. to our character's guide, which was part one. That is what you want to be doing that task for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Next, we've got... Let's go on to the Chaos Giant, because that's like monsters section. Yeah, yeah, yeah my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> so Callum's been I've... working on a Chaos Giant recently from the old Metal Orcs and Goblins Giant, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do some slight changes to it. I want to change its weapon. It's not like a tombstone on the end of a tree branch. I want it just to be a, a classic-looking uh like mace yeah like morning star um and i'm gonna do some other bits and pieces to it to make it look more chaosy but yeah i love especially now i love i actually just have such like a an affinity for giants they're so cool <laughs> an affinity for them eh? yeah <laughs> now you're not short but i wouldn't say you've got an affinity for giants but... <laughs> <laughs> so chaos giants before I start insulting Callum, we got, got 200 points, <laughs> movement 6, strength, toughness, wound 6, leadership 10, but you don't care because you're unbreakable, terror, yeah. immune to psych. You've got initiative 2, eh, weapon skill 3, eh, because you've got giant attacks. Yeah. You can have, you've got light armor, you can have heavy armor for 10 points. I take that. Just to guard you against yeah. arrows and stuff. Regen this six is the plus. This what? is the thing that diff makes it different from a normal giant, is it can have heavy armor and it can come with a regen. That's the thing that separates it from a normal giant. Would you take regen? I it's a lot of points for just a six. Yeah. Like I sort of feel the same way. Like, but I feel like fuck it, it I will. Because it's, it's really? a giant. <laughs> it's, yeah, I think I would. Yeah, if I'm running one giant, I think fuck it, I would. Uh, I just. I suppose I if it know. saves one wound for twenty points, that's more than got its worth. Do you know, like for it, this, this is my Achilles heel unit, by the way. Like I know, I know you're not going to see go, this. They're not. Yeah, like, but I'm taking them. <laughs> yeah, Phil, yeah Phil exactly. did the same. Phil did the same. Yeah. So it's just cool. <laughs> <laughs> so don't listen to anything Callum says in this section. Yeah, exactly. So I'm talking. Stomp attacks D six. Which adds quite a lot to its number of attacks, makes it more reliable yes. at taking down units. Because giant attacks are random. You've got Ed, but if you get a one, which is D3 plus one wounds, uh, with no armor or regen uh, permitted, and that's to a single model. So And it auto hits. Yeah, it auto hits. So you just pick up your enemy general and headbutt them. And it auto wounds, you just roll the D3 wounds. Yeah, with D3 plus one, it's like a cannonball. <laughs> no armor one. saves or regen as well, so it's just that water save. Whoosh. <laughs> you got belly flop. You place a small blast with the central hold directly over the center of the target unit. Any fro foe, any model, friend or foe, is hit, suffering <laughs> strength six AP minus two. Because the giant's such a fatty. <laughs> he is a fatty. He's the best fatty. You've got mighty swing. Uh, subject to random attacks. D6 plus one. Strength plus one. So that's strength seven AP minus two. So good. <laughs> Thump with club. You get um, a single model in the fighting rank of the enemy unit is engaged with. For this attack has a strength of plus four. So strength 10 at AP minus 4, multiple wounds, D6. Oh, hello That's again, crazy. enemy general. Bash. <laughs> or other monster. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, jump up and down. You get D6 plus 1 using the strength characteristic of this model, no armor saves. And then you'll get your stomp attacks after this at initiative 1. It's, it's really good, man. Yeah, I think it, for, for its points... I think it's it's good. I just think it's good. Like it's also got the pick up and brawls attached to it as well. Which yeah, so this is a I, choice between giant attacks or pick up and that you get. Which is a bit of a gimmick, stuff. but it's hilarious. Uh, do you want me to read it out? It's yeah, a, bit, go on, a summary if you. Yeah. Can so instead of making those giant attacks, the giant that is engaged with one or more enemy units, it has to be regular or heavy. 
can't be anything else. It can do a pickup. So it can't be monstrous, basically. On yeah, level, yeah. So you nominate that unit, and then that unit must take an initiative test. If the test has failed, the giant picks up that model's removed as a casualty if they fail that initiative test. Mm. If the test is passed, they dodge it and they miss attack. So it's very swingy. You then still afterwards roll this d6, and that's to see if he carries on picking up. <laughs> uh, so on a four plus, you attempt it again. And then that just keeps going infinitely for if you kept rolling four plus. It is a bit of a meme, but I find that so funny. <laughs> I am waiting for someone to do this to a dwarf unit, and he just goes, yoink, that's mine. Yoink, that's mine. I mean, I can roll 24 pluses, so... <laughs> <laughs> in a row yeah so I'll, I'll get that, i'll get that dwarf sword eventually <laughs> so yeah because it's, it's that's it it's, they take the, the initiative check as you said if they pass you just roll the four up and then they have to do it again yeah so it's just this can you how many four ups can the giant play roll until the it's funny it's gone <laughs> it's really funny no i I, I agree it's one of those interactions of the game like you have funny things happen but it's one of the really silly things that you look at you're an opponent look at each other and like this is so stupid but you both can't not laugh at it, at it no matter what happens because it's just a really ridiculous rule well that's one of the things i think the giant unit in particular i think there's lots of things in the old world that have been written because from a love of the game perspective yeah yeah, like, yeah. rather than like oh let's make the game as competitive as possible I think there's a yeah. lot that have just been written to be as fun as possible. And the Giants always yeah, been which a I place love. for that. But yeah. he's been like refined and it now both works. I think he's worth 200 points, kind of. Yeah, like, yeah, kind of. Like, oh, and it's got, the, it's got the timber rule as well. So if it dies, it can land on a unit as well, which is also <laughs> kind of hilarious. <laughs> yeah, terror. So it can make be a terror bomb and make people run away. It's, I mean, the giant attacks are now really good rather than just being like, oh, I've got a one. Like, I yell and ball, take a leadership check at minus two. Don't yeah. do any attacks, by the way. Which used to be just such harsh shit to play against. Yeah. If they got that. It's now a usable... It's really good for the giant, as it should be. Mm -hmm. But the table's, like, really usable. Yeah, so, I, I look at all these things and nothing really makes me go, oh, that's a shame. Yeah, agreed. Um, I will be taking two in the future in a fun, silly list. <laughs> I'll see you there. And let's go on to the Hell Cannon. This is the final thing for the list. So two yeah, is, isn't it? points. <laughs> <laughs> So, on to the Hell Cannon, the final thing in the list. For 215 points, you're going to get an artillery piece that is on the, the rather good side. It is expensive compared to, like, say, a mortar, which is its comparison point for, say, like, Empire or Dwarf, or dwarf Stone Throwers. But it's strength 5 or strength 10 if you're under the hole. AP minus 2, which is really good, actually, for a a stone throwery mortar thing or strength mm. five if you're under the hole multiple wounds d3 if you're under the hole and it's a three inch blast which is just normal right yeah that's normal for a stone thrower yeah but enemy enemy unit that suffers unsafe wounds must take a panic check as if they've been hit with heavy casualties and just forcing a load of casualties onto your opponent or just forcing a casualty onto your opponent to force a load of checks is really good i think yeah i think so too um it's a weird one the whole hell cannon i it wants to be two things doesn't it it wants to be a monster that wants to get in but it also wants to be a cannon that shoots <laughs> yeah no i think you're probably slightly overpaying for the the actual stat line of it yeah. But I don't think too much, like looking at it as like, well, it's almost, dra it's almost like 
giant or dragon stats at toughness six, five wounds. Yeah, hundred like percent. Strength, yeah. strength five. It's got cage fury during the start of the turn sub phase um, of each of your turns. Make a leadership test if failed. Roll on the hellfire miss cannon misfire table. Um, the misfire table. <laughs> the demon breaks loose on a one. Every model, friend or foe, within 3d6 of a d6 strength 5 hits, AP minus 1. Then it dies. <laughs> On a 2 to 4, kill one of the hand the three handlers. On a 5 to 6, it breaks its chains and moves 3d6 in a random... Or as if it were subject to random movement in the compulsory phase. So you could charge with it. And I think it's a really good charge defence... Is it just yeah. going crazy? Like it's... I just, it's it's such a weird unit, like, and it's a good one. Don't be wrong. I think it's good. I think it definitely has a place. It's just such a weird unit because it's also got like the demon special rules as well. It's it's unbreakable when walk spawns. Um, yeah, well, it's regen six. Yeah, it's going to be charging with d six impact hits at strength five. So like like a chariot this <laughs> is unbreakable which is like really good for a cannon regen mm. six it's toughness six what light cav or skirmish unit is going to be taking this down without losing a lot in return or just simply yeah. losing that combat you're gonna to have to shoot this with other cannons yeah yeah agreed or even put a combat specialist unit into it, an expensive combat unit into yeah. a cannon and it suits chaos down to the ground i'm very pro hell cannon yeah i don't think that hell cannon misfire table will come up that often because you have got dwarves on there at least at nine but um it you know dice to dice so occasionally it might pop up yeah yeah agree agreed um it so it comes up when you roll an actual misfire on the mm. the stone thrower part yeah, but yeah, it, it just is what it is. It's not the worst misfire table ever. You can you can fire it every turn, other than when like the, there's no like miss this turn and next turn shooting or anything like that. Mm. You fire it every turn, and yes, you'll miss out on this turn shooting if you misfire because you just lose it. But I'm yeah. not worried about missing next turns, so it's actually quite reliable in a weird way. Yeah. I've just no I've just noticed as well the cannon and the dwarves all have hand weapons and it has the ensorcelled weapons rule as well. So they also get minus one to their attack. Yeah, minus yeah. one to the armor saves and their so attack. It's gonna be as well. strength five at minus one AP. And yeah. the dwarves doing it strength three minus one. <laughs> yeah. But I think it's a great little unit and I'd say little unit. Yeah. Though. A great artillery, big artillery piece unit. Um, mm. And worthwhile in the Chaos Army for having that ranged threat. That Yeah. I always sort of think you need at least one ranged unit on the board. Be that I think... magic or this or like a, a unit with, a, say these mercenary units come out with a bow or something mm. like that. A bow. Just to control your opponent's movement that little bit, it means that characters can't run about on their own as much. Like they've got to be wary about where they're going. Yeah, if you've got I a think shooting unit because then you can just target them if they're outside of three. Talking on the on the topic of theme earlier, I think this would be really cool in a corn army. Um, if you're doing a pure corn themed, and because you're going to be, yeah, if you're running on a theme of no wizards. Mm. This this will be the substitute, I guess, for range damage of a wizard. Yeah, and it still fits. Like, and I yeah, was, yeah. I was reading the Knights of Britonia books recently, actually, and they include in the in the Knight of the Realm book a Norse army comes to Britonia mm. and has multiple. It's like these. They're just described randomly, but has multiple yeah. Chaos Dwarf cannons that I'm going to say they're Hell Cannons, but they like they're described as bigger than that. 
Yeah, yeah. But in the same way as any chaos, any chaos description or novel is just so random in how they describe things. But well, corner corners is, is as the god is, you know, each sh- may shun magic, but he's all about weapons. Like no matter what it is, like he's not a weapon. Do you not think these are just like allied people worshiping her shorts. Oh yeah, I do think that. But I'm talking about like if you wanted to fit it into your theme, mm. like if you were to do a, a corn army, corn is. Throughout, you know, in old, old fantasy lore, yeah, there was corn with bolt guns, <laughs> yeah, in the game because corn is like about even about advanced technological weaponry, he's just about can I bring death and collect their skulls sooner? Yes, well, do you want to get into your opponent's fortress or not? Yeah, like exactly. Someone, if you have some artillery, you get in there faster mm. rather than a protracted siege. I definitely agree with what you're saying, though. Like they are these sort of allied, like non-official, like allied attachment that come along with the Chaos Warriors army. Yeah. Um, because that I believe, don't quote me on this, but I think Chaos Dwarves can take Hell Cannons in their army book anyway. Yeah, yeah, I think they can do. We, yeah, we are at least aligned in our wrongness if we are wrong. Yeah, and that, that's the last one in the list. Is I I agree it should be in. In many a list, if you don't have another form of shooting, you're yeah. shoe, you you're shoehorning it into corn lists, worthwhile. And I think overall, for the like as a bit of a wrap up to the army, I think it's a it's a fairly solid army. The, all of the units seem to know what they're doing. Like yes, even they're like singular of purpose, and mm. even normal chaos knight. When I sort of wrote them off. It's only by comparison to Chosen Chaos Knights. Yeah. I think Warriors of Chaos, you can pretty much play what you want to a degree, as long as you're... Well, so you can say it for any army, but like you can really like go toe-to-toe with most things within the army. Like They are built to be that way. Um, they're combat monsters. So um, build, build how you like. Yeah, and treat them as such as the combat yeah. monsters. Um, hopefully everyone's enjoyed this two-part chaos guide. It went a bit... The first one obviously went a bit longer than expected, and I don't know how long <laughs> we've been recording this one, but I imagine it wasn't a small amount of time. Uh, oh, well. Yeah, oh, well. <laughs> hopefully everyone's enjoyed it, and we'll catch you next time. Cheers for coming on, Callum. See you later. In a bit.